The history of civilizations on Earth is like an epic story, full of ups and downs. We've gone through dark times and golden ages, from the fall of ancient empires to the rise of modern societies. But what if Earth isn't the only stage? Out there in the universe, there are countless planets like ours, and some might have civilizations that are millions or even billions of years old. Their technology could be way beyond our wildest dreams. So the big question is, where do we stand compared to them? Will humanity reach the peak of technological advancement, becoming a species that can spread across the stars and maybe even control an entire galaxy? Or could our own tech end up being our downfall? To figure out where we are in this cosmic race, or more specifically, how advanced we are compared to other possible civilizations, we can look at the work of astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev. Back in 1964, he created the Kardashev Scale, a way to measure the technological development of civilizations across the universe. The Kardashev Scale is built on a remarkably simple yet convincing idea. The more advanced and modern a society or civilization is, the more energy it needs to supply its population, power machines, and maximize the use of that energy. To truly understand this scale, we need to first explore why Kardashev chose energy consumption as the defining factor for development. We, as living beings, are essentially biological machines made up of countless cells, and we survive through metabolism. Metabolism is the process that keeps our bodies intact and functioning as a whole. To do this, we need energy, which we take in by eating and drinking. And in order to eat and drink, we need to move our bodies. In the early days, humans only knew how to hunt and gather food. But over time, we evolved and shifted to farming, then from agriculture to industry. This progression in technology allowed humanity to make huge leaps in its way of life, finding ways to harness more energy and use it more efficiently. Today, we like to think of ourselves as an advanced species with our shiny smartphones and sleek cars. But as the renowned theoretical physicist Michio Kaku once said, in the grand scheme of things, we are prehistoric beings. And he's right. When we look at the entire timeline of human existence, the hunting and gathering era makes up 90% of it. Just 30 years ago, the idea of owning a pocket-sized device capable of making calls and connecting to the internet anytime, anywhere would have sounded like pure fantasy. This is why energy is the core of every civilization. Without energy, we can't survive. The more energy we harness, the faster we develop. According to the Kardashev scale, there are three basic levels of civilization, each based on the amount of energy it can use. A type one civilization harnesses 10 to the power of 16 watts, a type two uses 10 to the power of 26 watts, and a type three taps into 10 to the power of 36 watts, 10 to the 36 power watts. Later, scientists expanded the scale to include even higher levels, type four, type five, and the highest, type seven. The additional levels on the Kardashev scale correspond not only to the energy required, but also to the amount of knowledge a civilization can access. Right now, our Earth is at level zero. We still rely on energy from long dead plants and animals, namely oil and coal. The progress we're so proud of today when compared to potential extraterrestrial civilizations is merely a tiny embryo. Surprised? It might be a shock to realize that according to the Kardashev scale, whether it's the prehistoric era, the industrial age, or even the nuclear powered 21st century, we're all still considered a level zero civilization. The key criterion for a level one civilization is its ability to harness the energy of an entire planet. So even though we've entered space and are preparing for missions to Mars, as long as we're still relying on fossil fuels like oil, natural gas, and coal, we remain a level zero civilization. That's because all of our energy comes from Earth and planetary energy is limited. In 1973, the renowned astronomer Carl Sagan devised a formula to estimate Earth's progress on the Kardashev scale. At that time, we were at 0.7, and after 50 years of development, we've only moved up to about 0.73, if a civilization wants to keep progressing, it must find alternatives to planetary energy. To reach level one, we would need to consume 10 to the power of 16 watts of energy per second. This is roughly the total energy consumed by all of humanity in 2019. According to Michio Kaku's recent calculations, 
Humanity would need to increase energy consumption by 3% each year to reach level one within the next 365 days, 100 to 200 years. At level one, a civilization can fully harness the energy of its home planet. This is the goal we're striving toward, whether we like it or not. To get there, we would have to increase our current energy production by more than 100,000 times. However, being able to harness the energy of an entire planet also means we could control the forces of nature. This would include the ability to manage volcanoes, control the weather, and even manipulate geological processes. On the flip side, we would also need to recycle or restore what we've destroyed. These criteria might sound unbelievable, but in the grand scheme of things, this is considered the most basic, primitive level of control. If all goes well, humanity could soon reach level one, also known as a planetary civilization. At that point, we would no longer depend on fossil fuels, but would instead rely on nuclear energy to power the planet, but not the nuclear energy we currently use. Today's nuclear power is based on nuclear fission, a process that produces radioactive waste harmful to both nature and humans. That's why an advanced level one civilization would naturally avoid using the current methods of nuclear energy. Instead, they would rely on nuclear fusion, which combines two smaller atoms into one larger atom, releasing immense energy without producing radioactive waste. This is the same process that powers the sun, providing it with heat and light. Fusion offers a far more sustainable energy source. Recently, scientists at the National Ignition Facility of Lawrence Livermore Laboratory in the US achieved a major breakthrough, successfully generating a net energy gain from nuclear fusion for the second time. In other words, they produced more energy from fusion than the energy used to initiate the reaction. This is a significant scientific milestone, paving the way for future achievements. However, it's important to note that this success has only been achieved in laboratories and has yet to be applied on a large scale. A true level one civilization, however, would have fully mastered nuclear fusion technology. With this power at their disposal, they could rely on it to successfully travel to any planet within the solar system. Since 1969, when Neil Armstrong first set foot on the moon, Humanity hasn't landed on another planet in more than half a century. The closest we've come is sending rovers to explore the surfaces of neighboring planets. Even Elon Musk's ambitious plan to land humans on Mars, initially set for 2024, has been delayed. So successfully sending humans to every planet in the solar system would undoubtedly be one of the defining signs of an advanced civilization. Beyond advancements in aerospace technology, the inhabitants of a level one civilization wouldn't just live on the ground, they'd have the capability to dwell among the clouds or even build cities under the ocean. At this stage, humanity would need to excel in global communication and focus on building infrastructure that fosters collaboration, education, research, and innovation. A level one civilization would also strengthen relationships between those who remain on Earth and those who migrate to other planets or space stations, creating a harmonious coexistence. If humanity fails to advance in these critical areas, we could fall into a deep abyss. An advanced civilization must evolve faster than the rate at which cosmic disasters hostile to life, such as asteroid or comet impacts occur. A level one civilization would also have the ability to master space travel, allowing it to deflect threatening objects, it would even be capable of predicting the onset of an ice age and adjusting the climate long before such events take place. Experts predict that a civilization at this stage would thrive for about 3,000 years before realizing that even nuclear fusion, as powerful as it is, wouldn't be enough to sustain further growth. To continue advancing, a level one civilization would have no choice but to reach for the stars. Based on an estimated growth rate of 1% per year, Kardashian believed that humanity would take around 3,200 years to achieve type two status. However, more recent calculations suggest that it could take as little as 1,000 to 2,000 years for us to transition into a type two or stellar civilization. A type two civilization would be capable of harnessing the energy of an entire star and its surrounding planets. This wouldn't just involve converting sunlight into energy, but actually controlling the star itself. Several methods have been proposed to achieve this, with the most famous being the theoretical Dyson structures. 
In 1960, physicist Freeman Dyson proposed some extraordinary celestial technologies that could help us detect signs of alien civilizations. He suggested that if an extraterrestrial society's energy needs surpassed what their home planet could provide, they might build a megastructure called a Dyson Sphere around their star to capture energy on a massive scale. Technically, this structure would consist of a fleet of orbiting satellites that could transform solar energy into usable power. The Dyson Sphere could cover every square centimeter of the star, collecting most, if not all, of its energy output and transferring it elsewhere for use. Let's imagine for a moment, a Type II civilization wouldn't just be capable of building megastructures like a Dyson Sphere, but could also house people within them and control everything happening inside. Such a civilization could alter the orbits of planets, harvest asteroids and comets, and essentially make use of the entire solar system. Curious what a civilization with this much energy could achieve. No current scientific discovery could destroy such an advanced civilization, provided humanity lives long enough to reach this level. If a moon-sized object wandered into our solar system with the potential to collide with Earth, we could simply vaporize it. Or, given enough time, we could move our planet to a different location entirely. But what if we don't want to move Earth? Is there another option? Of course. We could move Jupiter or another planet into position to shield Earth from the impact. But soon enough, the residents of a Type II civilization would realize that even the stars of the galaxy wouldn't be enough to meet their energy demands. This would quickly push them into the next stage of development, a Type III civilization. At this level, they would expand across the entire galaxy, settling and controlling multiple star systems. After hundreds of thousands of years of biological and technological evolution, the inhabitants of a Type III civilization might become unrecognizable compared to humanity today. We could see the rise of hybrid life forms, part human, part machine, along with computer-based beings and other life forms that combine biology with machinery, all coexisting. In this scenario, fully biological humans might become an inferior race within this highly advanced society. Fully organic humans could be viewed as disabled or de degenerate compared to the superior machine species. At this stage, they would have developed self-replicating robots, capable of multiplying their population to the millions, spreading across the galaxy from one star system to another. These beings could construct vast Dyson networks around stars, creating gigantic systems that would transport energy back to their home planet or star system. However, expanding across an entire galaxy could come with significant challenges, particularly due to the laws of physics, especially the speed of light. Unless they develop a device capable of bending space or harness a stored energy source to conquer wormholes for instant travel, both still theoretical at this point, interstellar travel remains a massive hurdle. In terms of medicine, a Type III civilization would have extended human lifespan to its maximum potential. Currently, scientists estimate the human lifespan to cap it around 120 to 150 years. Once the biological limits are reached, medical technology would likely shift its focus toward consciousness, exploring ways to surpass the limitations of the physical body, allowing human consciousness to persist beyond flesh and bone. While the civilization continues advancing through type three, true immortality for humankind may remain out of reach. Yet Kardashev's scale doesn't stop here. The question remains, what lies beyond the third stage? Kardashev didn't provide a specific hypothesis about civilizations beyond Type 3, but futurists have speculated that a Type 4 civilization could harness the energy of the entire universe. In this scenario, their society would likely include highly advanced races and possibly less developed species that are either dependent on them or even driven to extinction. At this level, a civilization could manipulate the very fabric of space and time itself, expanding their living space across the universe and utilizing dark matter and dark energy, essentially possessing godlike powers. Compared to a Type Zero civilization, which is still bound by planetary energy sources, a Type Four civilization would have mastered wormholes to shorten the journey between stars. However, since wormholes aren't naturally accessible everywhere, they would first need to travel from their planet to specific points where these wormholes exist, a process that still takes a considerable amount of time. To truly cut down on interstellar travel time, a Type IV civilization would likely pursue the creation of artificial wormholes, 
thereby opening new doors to instantaneous travel across vast distances. However, creating a wormhole requires an immense amount of energy, so much so that only a supernova could provide the necessary power within an entire galaxy. Stars sustain themselves by consuming nuclear energy from within, creating a balance against the gravitational forces pulling inward. Once a star runs out of fuel, gravity collapses it inward, leading to a catastrophic supernova explosion. According to scientists, at that moment, the energy released by the supernova equals the total energy the star had emitted over billions of years. Not all stars can become supernovae, though. To qualify, a star must be at least 1.4 times the mass of our sun. Experts estimate that a supernova occurs in the Milky Way only once every 40 years, while throughout the universe, a supernova explosion happens every 10 seconds. For a Type IV civilization, traveling across galaxies to find supernovae wouldn't be a challenge, as they've already mastered wormhole technology. Along with intergalactic travel, these advanced beings would have also unlocked the secrets of consciousness, manipulation, and achieved immortality. Some speculate that they might even be able to create life itself. This has led to a fascinating theory that many Type Zero civilizations, like our own, might actually be life forms created by a Type IV civilization. If that's true, these beings could be the very gods we imagine. After countless journeys through wormholes, these advanced beings of a Type IV civilization would have discovered that the universe is not singular. There are many universes. In the final stages of their development, they would have confirmed the existence of alternate universes and sought ways to reach them. To achieve this, they would need energy far greater than what even supernovae could provide. That's when they would turn to the concept of a white hole. White holes are a theoretical concept from the 1970s, the opposite of black holes. While a black hole is an area of immense gravitational compression, a white hole is the inverse. It has no mass and doesn't allow anything to enter. Black holes are so dense that they can even trap light, but white holes, theoretically, repel all matter and energy, preventing anything from penetrating them. Unlike black holes, which have been observed, white holes remain purely theoretical, with no experimental proof of their existence. Some physicists believe that white holes could form in the same location as a former black hole, and others even hypothesize that the Big Bang itself could have been a massive white hole explosion. A Type IV civilization with access to incomprehensible amounts of energy could potentially harness the energy of a white hole to traverse between universes, pushing them into a new phase of development. Entering the realm of a Type V civilization, also known as a multiversal civilization, a society at this level would be capable of utilizing the energy of multiple universes, transcending the very fabric of reality as we understand it. At this stage, the physical senses we rely on, such as sight, sound, and touch, would become obsolete. These beings would perceive the world in ways entirely alien to us, with reality governed by vastly different physical laws, where time, space, and matter may not even exist in the forms we recognize. This civilization could create new life forms and manipulate entire universes at will. In comparison to us, they would seem like gods, possessing seemingly limitless powers and knowledge. But the question remains, who created God? After exploring countless universes, a Type V civilization would start realizing that life doesn't only exist in the three-dimensional world, but can also inhabit higher dimensions beyond our comprehension. These higher dimensions, known as super dimensions, are vastly more complex and civilizations at this stage would gradually become aware of their existence, leading to a desire to ascend to these higher realms. However, to enter such a realm, they must first discard their physical bodies, bound to three-dimensional space. For a Type V civilization, this isn't a daunting task, as they've already mastered the manipulation of consciousness, yet they still need an immense amount of energy to ascend to the next level. At this point, everything becomes increasingly abstract, with existence transcending space and time itself. A civilization of this caliber could even create or destroy entire multiverses, an act that would seem impossible from our limited perspective. If such a civilization exists, you'd never know it because, as a being within a three-dimensional world, you'd be part of their game, 
powerless to perceive or comprehend their influence. This is why a type six civilization is referred to as a multidimensional or godlike civilization. They're virtually perfect, immune to destruction and beyond any conflict with lower beings. Finally, there's the ultimate level, type seven, also called the Omega Civilization. Members of this civilization have achieved true immortality using virtual technologies to traverse and manipulate different universes. To succeed in this feat, they would need to bend space-time, creating voids or new realms that would serve as homes for relocated entities. Reaching this ultimate level would take humanity at least 10 billion years, but at that point, they would defy every known law of physics. Even though this idea seems far-fetched now, humanity has already achieved remarkable scientific advancements, from hunter-gatherers to taking our first steps on the moon. We've reshaped the Earth, but compared to the levels of universal civilizations, we're just at the beginning. Nevertheless, through cooperation and unity, humanity has unlocked some of the universe's greatest mysteries, achieving scientific breakthroughs that benefit society. These advances are the result of a global network of knowledge built by intellectuals from every corner of the Earth. Diverse talents come together, forging a collective strength that drives innovation and creativity. No matter how distant or close nations may be, they all contribute to the shared goal of human progress.